of 20 minutes away from nine. Time to um, get opinions from the man at publicaddress.net. It's the hard news blog there. Russell Brown, a Media 7 show on TVZ7. Morning, Russell. Good morning. Extraordinary admission from the Prime Minister this morning. He says that the uh, the increase in pokies at Sky City with the trade-off of the law change and uh, the convention centre was his idea. He approached Sky City. Yeah, which is quite remarkable because the understanding has been that Sky was lobbying on its own behalf for quite some time. Also, an expansion and and also that um, that that Sky City were um, you know going through the court process before two thousand eight to try and get more pokies, but since National went into government, they cancelled all their court proceedings. Exactly. Yeah. No. It's it is it is pretty remarkable. Um, it, I, I've been sitting here thinking that. Maybe really all you need to do to get your own policy uh, option underway is uh, basically put Sky in your name. <laughs> yeah. like if, if the inner city rail link was the inner city Sky link, I yes. think it would have been funded by Stephen Joyce tomorrow. Yes, or the um, Sky Public Service TV channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we think of that? <laughs> Um, th- th- this is extraordinary. Anywhere else in the world, if we were outside looking in, let's say this was Fiji or something, we'd be going, oh, gosh, that's an awfully corrupt thing going on there. We would be, I think. It, it, it's a terrible look. And I, I actually suspect there is, uh, there's more to come on this. I, there are disaffected Sky, um, Sky City employees. It's, yeah, the, I, I do actually suspect this is going to blow up in the government's face. And they deserve it, mm. from what we know now. Um, they basically put the law up for sale. Yeah, this is kind of our own um, uh, phone tapping scandal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it's not quite that, that bad, but it, it does. Um, I, I think it's, a, it's maybe the clearest illustration yet of. Um, I think the big problem with the current government is, is the contempt for process. Yeah, uh, which le- ends up leading to a contempt for the law. And um, I think that's what we're seeing here. I mean, it would be great to have a nice new convention centre. They are good economically. Um, they're not an absolute boon, but it would help. But, you know, if it's um, at the cost of um, further public gambling problems and um, the principle of the law, yeah. that the law is not for sale, mm. uh, then no, I don't want it. I mean, surely we can get a convention centre without changing any laws that affect other things. Yeah. Yeah, what, what actually would be interesting for me is to see some independent analysis, uh, not of the, the claims about gambling because I think, uh, yeah, and, and public health, because I think they've been fairly well trawled over, yeah. but of the numbers to say that, uh, that you know, we, um, you know, oh, no one's going to build a convention yeah, center. that no one else would do it. Money. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe they do. So maybe, maybe, maybe Auckland Airport might be interesting. Who knows? There's all sorts of organisations that could be into convention yep. centres. Yeah, exactly. And um, these new machines are going to make Sky more than Sky's admitting, by the look of it. Yeah. There are figures emerging on that as well. So it is kind of depressing. Record profits last year for Sky City, by the way. Yep, mm. yep. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's Mike Hosking. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's another matter entirely. Um, on to, on to com- uh, completely other matters, though. Um, more entertainment sort of stuff and very cool technology. This, um, this, this hologram, or not so, so much hologram, but just interesting way of getting raising uh, stars from the dead and putting them on stage. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Tupac Shakur, uh, the, uh, at the, the closing performance at Coachella. Um, it, it was... It, it was remarkable. I mean, I, you know, I think like everyone, I've got misgivings about this becoming a trend, you know, grave robbing digital stars. Mm. But um, in the context of what of what they were doing in that show, it, it was incredible, actually. And, and one of the reasons that it was that way is that because millions of us around the world were watching it, uh, thanks to the Coachella live stream via YouTube. Yeah. And the more people who witness an illusion, the greater the impact that illusion has. Indeed. And, um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, as you said, it's strictly speaking, not uh, a hologram. Um, true holograms are really difficult to project, um, especially in a public situation like that. Uh, it's actually an instance of Pepper's Ghost, uh, which dates all the way back to the 1860s and was first used in a stage production of Charles Dickens' The Haunted Man. Well, there you go. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I've seen um, a, a Pepper's Ghost uh, illusion in real life, and they do work. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, it's a very convincing image. Uh, the first one was actually um, on the public stage like that, was actually the gorillas at the MTV Europe Awards. Huh. Um, and the idea to do that, to do something uh, mind-blowing, was actually uh, Brent Hansen, the New Zealander who was uh, president and CEO of MTV Networks Europe. Yeah. 
So we've got our little little Kiwi fame connection there. Uh, it, I mean, it's smoke and mirrors, essentially, isn't it? It is, literally. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah um, not, not necessarily smoke, but definitely mirrors. Yeah. Um, if you've ever uh, read off an auto cue, which I do every week, it's yeah. actually the same principle. Right. Uh, it's, it's a, the, uh, an image is reflected up and into a um, vertical piece of glass. Uh, and that's what we saw. The, 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 in a way, the more interesting part of it, though, was the actual recreation of Tupac, because it was incredibly convincing. Mm, mm. And it was done by some combination that they don't want to talk about of, uh, you know, of archive film footage of him in concert yeah. and CGI. Yeah. But, boy, wow. And we may see it on tour, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think that actually maybe the more interesting thing is, is no one needs the tour anymore. Well, that's right. You just yeah. beam it across the world. Yeah, yeah. and uh, major major international acts can go to places like Westport. Yeah. Can't they? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It can be anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Cause, and the, the, uh, one of the things I found interesting is that this stuff isn't that expensive. I know people have misgivings that it's basically you know big entertainment. Um, you know, once again redefining yeah. the world, and there's nothing in it for us. But when you're talking about something that costs hundreds of thousands mm. to put together, rather than millions, and we have one of the world's best effects houses uh, currently working in Wellington, mm. then maybe there's, there, there is something in it for us. Um, it, I, I just wouldn't want it to, to be, you know, to turn into grave robbing. People turn I mean, up more interesting things you can do. Well, that's true. But people turn up to things like uh, the uh, Pink Floyd Experience. Don't they? Yeah. And, and, and so you no longer need um, the Pink Floyd experience with actual musicians on stage. You could just use archival footage of Pink Floyd. Yeah. And do that. Bring back Sid Barrett. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or um, you, you could go the gorillas route and, and completely create characters. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you yeah, know, I've always thought with this sort of thing that, that there is, we're waiting for uh, a, a great multimedia artist to really do something with all this, all this kind of technology. Yeah. And you, you think it will, it will probably happen. Um, the, as I noted when I wrote uh, the blog post about it yesterday, um, the hol holopack kind of actually distracted our attention from the marvel of the fact that we had three live channels of Coachella available to us uh, if we could run YouTube. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, and I, I would expect to see more and more of this because, you know, I'd actually pay for high-quality concert footage. I mean, you, you saw the LCD sound system. Yeah, yeah. One. That was exciting. Yeah. There's something much more exciting about um, you know, actually um, seeing something that's live than, that you don't get from watching a DVD. Um, interesting point here, though. The only way that this sort of thing's going to work is if, uh, ISPs are able to zero rate their traffic, which on a technical level is no problem because mm. this came to us via a, a content distribution network called Akamai. Akamai has 95,000 servers all around the world, including one in the data center of your ISP. Mm. It's an absolute cert. Yeah. But uh, if they are not able to, if your ISP is, is not able to, uh, to a actually um, zero rate the traffic, then the whole thing falls down and we don't get this. It, it stymies innovation, and that's exactly the effect of the agreements that ISPs have to sign with Sky if they're going to do any business with Sky at all. Yeah, it comes down to all these issues of net neutrality, doesn't it? But, yeah, absolutely. But, but they... I, and I, I just think that you know, it, it's becoming absurd, uh, the extent to which the government is intent on protecting mm. Sky uh, against you know, you know, all rational arguments. Uh, Kirsty Way on Media Watch on Radio New Zealand, on, who's the Sky spokesperson yeah. on Sunday, actually admitted that Sky's reseller agreements curb competition yeah. in pay TV. Extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, if, if I was taking something to the Commerce Commission, yeah. I, would, I would wave that around. Is because that's... Sky has admitted that its agreements uh, restrict competition in its business. There's that Sky word again. Yeah. Uh, uh, Although, and I agree with you that that these things should be um, zero rated stuff like YouTube. But what, but yeah, but what if another service wanted to live stream and what they weren't doing it on YouTube? You know, you get this problems of of net neutrality where um, some services are favoured over the over others. Yeah, I think it should just be up to um, ISPs to deliver what their customers want. Mm. And if it's feasible on a technical level, which um, pretty much means that you're using um, a, a content distribution network that puts the server right in the ISP's data center, so it costs virtually nothing to deliver. Yeah. 
if you can get it to that point, then let the market take over. This is what annoys me about the communications minister, Amy Adams, saying, describing uh, their hands-off attitude to Sky as a market-driven solution. It's the opposite. Yeah, yeah. It's the opposite of a market. Hey, on, on that note, mm. um, interesting though that Orcon yesterday unleashed um, one terabyte plans not on ultra-fast broadband but on normal connections yesterday. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. very interesting actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 exactly who's going to use a terabyte of data oh, well. a month on, the, on DSL, I'm not quite sure. But the, those sort of plans eliminate the need for zero rating. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah, they do actually because mm. there's no way, that, you know, there's so much headroom you're not going to get there. Yeah. Uh, so that's the other way of doing it. Also, Telstra Clear yesterday uh, uh, announced that it's um, raising, it's, it's going to offer a USB equivalent, 100 megabits per second. In Wellington Christchurch. In Wellington Christchurch, yeah. where it's got cable. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty interesting as well. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm actually waiting for my VDSL to get connected in um, Point Chef. Now, how do you do that? Um, I don't think all the ISPs do it. My one, Snap, who've been exemplary so far, uh, do do it, but they appear to have lost my order. Huh. Uh, so I'm going to have to wait another week or two, which is a bit annoying. So, but, um, so this is basically really fast internet, but do they need to um, dig anything up in the front of your house? How does no, it work? No, basically it's all there. All the gear's there. All you need to do is uh, buy um, a VDSL router for your home, which is pretty much looks pretty much exactly like the ADSL router that we've all already got, Yeah. Uh, and pay an extra 50 bucks a month. But you're talking about, um, I know uh, Uha Saranen uh, on the North Shore there is getting 50 megabits yeah. most days. Yeah, brilliant. That's five times as fast as most people are getting at the moment. <laughs> so so that, that's all quite exciting. We are going to get much okay. faster internet whether we get cable uh, straight away or not. And this is the, the dirty little secret about ultra-fast broadband is that... Um, uh, it's going to take 10 years to roll out. Yeah. And there are go there's going to be someone who waits 10 years, <laughs> which but is terrible. At the risk of stringing this out, though, I, I, I thought that we were already at the max of what our copper can handle. Um, the, yeah, the, what, with VDSL? Yeah. Um, well, with it, the... It's a different protocol. Um, it's a different technology, okay. and it gets more out of the copper, basically. All right. So, Excellent. But, yeah. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, Russell. Right, oh, hey, one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Media 7 this week uh, looks at Keith Hunter's new book on the uh, crew murders. Uh, he has a new theory um, about uh, who killed them. And if you're an older listener, you'll remember this from the 70s. So I'm quite looking forward to the show. It was 1971 that he was reconvicted once again exactly. this week. Yes, um, Media 7 show, Thursday evenings, just after 9 o'clock news on TVNZ7. Cheers. Lovely. See ya. Cheers, mate. Also, the public address.net for all um, a whole lot more on those um, topics we've just been talking about as well.